Hi, welcome to How to Repair. If you have a tumble dryer, whether it's a condenser tumble dryer or a normal vented tumble dryer, Hoover or Candy made, if it won't turn, in other words the drum will not rotate and you hear a noise from the motor as if it is turning, then there's a good chance that your belt's gone. Now you can see that in our other video. But if you also have a tumble dryer which you may hear a slight humming noise and the drum will not turn, you may have a motor fault or a capacitor which actually kick starts the motor. Uh, let me show you this first. So we'll just turn this tumble dryer on. Now if you listen closely uh, when I turn this tumble dryer on now, you will hear a distinct noise, a humming noise, off the motor. Uh, we'll just set it to a program, press start, and you can hear a humming noise. This humming noise could be a capacitor fault. The easiest way of checking this is to take the lid off, and I'll show you what to do. Right, undo the three screws at the back, take the lid off. Lid lifts up, pulls away. The wood sometimes can swell, okay, so it might be tricky to get the lid off. If you have a humming noise on the tumble dryer, there's a good chance that the drum is not turning. Uh, the belt's in good condition, as we can see here. Uh, everything is free, moving, but when we turn it on and press start, you can hear this humming noise. Now carefully using the palm of your hand, if you give the drum a push, it starts. This is a good indication that it's the capacitor. Now on these Hoover type machines, you will have to take the capacitor out because the manufacturer on a lot of the motor systems does not sell for some unknown reason the capacitor individually. So if you take the capacitor out, which I'll show you how to do now, we'll be able to look on the side of the capacitor, find out how many microfarad this capacitor is, and we can use a universal capacitor. First thing you need to do before dismantling the machine is unplug the machine from the electricity supply. Right, we'll turn the machine backwards because there are, on both models, the condenser dryer and the normal dryer, there's three, two or three screws and you will have to undo the legs to get at the outside screws on the normal vented tumble wire. So we'll just undo these three screws. And now we'll rest the machine back down. Now, inside the door we have four screws, but before we touch them, we're going to take the facial panel off. Straightforward, two screws on the top, once you've done that, the panel comes forward and lifts. Now we won't disconnect the wiring on this one because there's plenty of room and this gives us access to the two screws at the top but we won't do them, undo them until we've taken all the front off. Right, torque 20 to take the door off on this model, sometimes they're Phillips screws. They'd always support the door when undoing the screw, as this door has already got a crack in the glass which needs replacing. And then once you've undone the last screw, just lift the door and it comes away. Right, next we'll take out the filter, peel off the seal. And now we'll undo the four screws that hold the plastic framework and the drum support to the front panel. Make sure you always write down, or not write down, but always mark where the screws came from because they are different threads to go into plastic than into the metal. 
Now all this is undone, we'll undo the two at the top and then we have to disconnect the wiring from the door lock. panel comes away and then we've got two wires which go onto the door lock and that's your door lock. It's just a straightforward micro switch uh, attached to the locking mechanism so it's just uh, the wires can go on either way around. Right, here we have the NTC sensor and we also have a uh, normal thermostat below and there's also two thermostats on the tumble dryer at the rear as well. So before I undo these bolts all the way around to take the front off, uh, it's well worth pointing out, it is well worth getting the vacuum cleaner out and cleaning all this fluff away. It will make the machine operate much better, it will stop overheating problems with regards to the uh, thermostats and NTC sensors and it will make the machine much more efficient. Right, there's four 7mm bolts all the way around. Now on the normal vented tumble dryer you should be aware that there's one screw hidden underneath that uh, you need to remove to remove the plastic tray. So we'll just tilt this back and underneath here is one additional screw that you need to undo before removing the plastic housing. This will give you access to the tube system. Then there are two screws just underneath the cowling here. If you've got any doubts whatsoever before removing the wiring, make sure you take a picture. Now we've got everything removed, just unclip the wiring. Now these come out by lifting. Now if the belt is still on the machine, uh, you've got to actually lift the plastic up on both sides. This comes towards you then. And you're able to take the pressure off the drum. tilts back and away. Now you can actually see how much fluff has built up on this machine uh, so we're going to go through it very well with a top hoover in a second and we can remove the whole vent tube. Now this gives us clear access to the motor underneath and now we need to clean out the whole of this in here first. Right, I've actually taken the front of the uh, system away so you can actually see how to change this capacitor. It's basically, you have to be careful because capacitors need to be discharged before you start handling them. But because of the location on this, you can't do that. You can uh, go across the plug with a screwdriver, that might help discharge it, uh, but really you should Undo it carefully, remove the 13mm nut on the back, and as you can't really get a screwdriver in there, if you turn it on its side, I don't know if you can see that, uh, I'll just move the camera for you, right, I'm just turning it on its side, I'm not touching any part of the machine, 
just rub the two contacts against the drum and that should discharge it. And then you can disconnect the two wires on top of the capacitor. And this allows you to get the capacitor out. Now this capacitor, if you look closely on the side, they do vary on machines. Some are 7, 7.5 or 8. But if you look closely at the side here, you can see it says 7 UF plus or minus 5%. Okay, so that's the bit you're interested in, 7 UF. Now you can put a universal on these, and we have them at the website for a few pounds. And straightforward, easy to change. You can see on the end of the capacitor, it's got a line through the middle. One side is the positive, the other is the negative. It doesn't matter which way round. Uh, but some capacitors, the universals, do come with four connections. That's only so you can put additional wires. So we'll just put this capacitor on now. This is a spare I had, which I know is good. Got the two wires on, put it back in its hole. And do it up. Now we're ready to reassemble the machine. Once you've cleaned everything, you can start reassembling. So we'll put the front tube on. Line up the second part. We've got to lean the machine backwards to put the screw in. front assembly on. Now all we need to do is assemble the front unit. It's well worth inspecting these pulley wheels, make sure there's no play in them, and also on the jockey wheels. This then slots in to the two top ones, and you have to lift it up. Sorry, the wiring should go over. And slot these two in. And you need to lift upwards. And there you go. And then it just drops down into place on each side. That one's not down enough at the moment. And that's because of the housing. And then you should get good alignment. we go, everything's lined up. And I'm actually going to thread the wire through here and then across onto the NTC sensor and then the two thermostatic wires go straight back on. Ready for the door lock but first we need to put the four bolts in. Now we're ready to connect the front panel up. Again, two wires for the door lock. And we'll put the two top screws in first. Screws. I'm not going to nip them up yet until I got the seal on. Bring the control panel back down. Now we'll put the seal on. I always put the crease on my left hand side. Thank you. 
because I've got the seal on and I'm happy to nip up the chassis. Now we'll put the three screws on the bottom. Slide the door in. Right, now that we've got the machine connected back to the electricity, it's a good idea to make sure the belt is going round on the centre of the dome correctly. So we'll just turn it to the minimum setting, press start, and there we go. Now just put the lid on the machine and you're ready to go. Thanks very much indeed for watching this video. Please remember to subscribe to our channel as that's what keeps us going and able to make these free videos for you. And there's links above and also in the description below that will take you through to the website to purchase your capacitor. And if you need help with any other videos on your appliance, please visit the website. Thanks for watching.